This is the best piece of advice I've ever heard about building high net worth. It came from a millionaire I admired as a child, and it's stuck with me since. I used to worry that I'd never have enough money to afford the things I'd always dreamed about having. His exact words to me were, Don't worry about earning millions. Instead, focus on the first $100,000, because after that, your net worth will go crazy. I didn't fully understand him at the time, but I did what he said. And lo and behold, it worked. So, why is the first $100,000 the hardest? Well, there are two main reasons for this. The first is your earning power. Think of this like your level in a video game. You just haven't been playing long enough to build up your skills, and therefore, can't compete with the more experienced players. This is the same when it comes to making money. When you're younger, this issue is getting even worse. A recent study found that Gen Z has about 86% less buying power than my generation, the boomers, did at the same age. This is partly due to older people staying in the workforce longer, making higher paid positions harder to come by. But it isn't all doom and gloom. The internet offers a great way for younger people to make far more money than the older generation, as most of them don't understand how to use Instagram, let alone build an online side hustle. When it comes to tech, there aren't that many boomers who can keep up with you guys, not like me. The second reason your first $100,000 is the hardest is your lack of compound interest. Think of your money like a snowball. You roll it down the hill by investing money, and as it rolls, it picks up more snow, which is your compound interest. The bigger your snowball gets, the more snow it collects, and therefore, the more compound interest you make. Sounds amazing, right? Well, yes and no, let me explain. Right now, if you don't have at least $100,000, then your snowball isn't big enough to pick up any significant income. You essentially can't really benefit from compound interest. I mean, let's say you invest $10,000 in an S&P 500 index fund and get an average yearly return of 7%. After five years, your money will have grown from $10,000 into $14,175. That's five whole years to earn $4,175. That's why it's so hard to reach the first $100,000. It's all about how much you can contribute to your investing pot rather than how much compound interest you're making. This means you're going to have to make more money any way you can. Honestly, it was no different for me. I remember doing at least three different side hustles at the same time in order to earn enough money. Working this many hours and also resisting the urge to spend it on vacations and the latest designer clothes is really a killer. But trust me, it's worth it as once you hit that first $100,000, it's way, way easier to grow your money. So why does net worth go crazy after $100,000? The answer is because compound interest stops being lame and actually starts to sound pretty unbelievable. Take a look at this chart. If you invest $10,000 annually with a 7% average yearly return, going from $0 to $100,000 will take 7.84 years. However, going from $100,000 to $200,000 will only take 5.1 years. So overall, it'll take 2.74 years less to make the second $100,000 compared to the first. That's 35% faster to make your second $100,000 than the first. And it gets even better. If we expand things to go from $200,000 to $300, it only takes 3.78 years. Then $300,000 to $400,000 takes three years, and $400,000 to half a million is only 2.5 years. We could keep going, but I think you get the idea. Just look at how the chart starts to go crazy, but it all happens after the first $100,000. Getting that chunk of money as fast as possible is the key. Just think, if you can shave just a couple of years off how long it takes you to reach that $100,000 mark, how much quicker you'll become a millionaire. Once you get to this point, it's almost inevitable that you'll be wealthy. If all you wanted to do was save up this $100,000 and invest it in an S&P 500 index fund and never invest again, let's say, I don't know, you completely forgot about the account, you would still become a millionaire within 33 years. That's how powerful compound interest is once you've made that first $100,000. So, how do you make your first $100,000? Well, all you need to do is follow the growth method I actually came up with myself, and it helped me in those early days of wealth building. So hopefully, it can help you too. The G stands for gain control of your finances. There's one way and one way only to gain control, and that's budgeting. Yep, I said it. Now don't get it twisted. Budgeting isn't a rule book designed to stop you from having fun. It's more like a guide that navigates you toward more informed choices. 
I'm not saying you have to be super frugal with your money, but you do need to understand the difference between your needs and your wants. The R stands for root your investments. Let's say you invest $250 a month in an S&P 500 index fund and get an average yearly return of 7%. In 40 years, you'll have $656,000. But what's even more impressive is that $536,000 of this is from compound interest. In other words, you only have to put in $120,000 of it yourself. I know what you're probably thinking, that's all well and good, but by that time, I'll be over 60 years old and dribbling into my dinner. I fully understand. That's why if you can get this first $100,000 invested as soon as possible, then you'll do much better than this example. Now you're making some money. You need to focus on the O, which stands for optimize your tax management. It might sound fancy, but in reality, it's as simple as this. Avoid paying taxes. Now let me make something very clear. Tax avoidance is completely fine and something that smart people do. Tax evasion, on the other hand, is illegal and not what I'm talking about. But Mark, if you're earning more, you should pay more tax. I agree with you, and the rich do pay the majority of the taxes, but there should also be an incentive for someone to become an entrepreneur as they provide jobs for the rest of society. Fortunately, entrepreneurs are taxed on the profits they make annually, allowing them to deduct expenses from their earnings. These deductions are known as write-offs. This differs from employees who are taxed based on their monthly salary. For instance, if you're deeply passionate about the latest tech, such as the new iPhone, you could initiate a YouTube channel reviewing gadgets. Once it starts generating income, you can deduct the cost of your tech items from your profit, making them tax-free. Essentially, the government aids in paying for the items. However, this is within reason. Your business or side hustle must genuinely require these items. Starting a business aligned with your passion can significantly reduce your tax burden. I did this with my radio control model shops, and my son does the same with his video production company. If this interests you, we'll delve deeper into this topic in my 2K challenge on Discord. I'll leave a link in the description for you to reserve your spot. It's free, and there are chances to win some great prizes. Moving on to W, which stands for Weed Out Debts. Did you know the average American carries 21 to 100 hund of debt? If you're in debt, you're not alone. The first step is listing all your debts and prioritizing them based on their interest rates. Start with the debts carrying the highest interest rates. This is crucial due to the negative impact of compound interest, which can work against you if not understood. Think of it like the sun melting the snow you're collecting to reach your first 100K. If debt keeps melting away your earnings, you'll struggle to progress. My advice is to make consistent payments, no matter how small, as every bit helps. Ignoring debt will only lead to more stress in the future. Instead, consider it an investment towards your financial goals. T stands for tap into additional streams of income. As of 2023, 50% of Americans have a side hustle, even those earning over 100K annually. A side hustle offers various benefits by diversifying income, enabling more funds for tax-advantaged accounts and investments. This contributes to the snowball effect, allowing compound interest to work in your favor. Finally, HE stands for heightened self-discipline. To implement these strategies effectively, discipline is crucial. Discipline is the key to success, shaping your future wealth. If you're interested in learning how to build wealth from scratch, I'll have that video available for you. But before watching, consider subscribing to grow your wealth. All right, I'll meet you over there.